Welcome to Roadmap to Residency. Hello everyone, I am your coach Aviraz. Uh, today we will be going through a few questions with you guys to help you on your journey to a 250. So uh, whenever you encounter USMLE style question, the first thing that you need to do is to read the last line first. So this question is straightforward, asking us about the most likely diagnosis. So we have a 56 year old woman presents to an emergency physician, to a primary care physician with complaints of persistent bone pain and muscle weakness. She also reports frequent episodes of kidney stones over the past year. Okay, on physical examination, she appears fatigued and her blood pressure is 150 upon 90. Lab test reveal a serum calcium level of 11.4, serum phosphate level of 2.5, and PTS level of 85. So uh, what is the most likely diagnosis? Primary hyperaldosteronism, primary hyperparathyroidism, secondary hyperparathyroidism, hypoparathyroidism, or hyperthyroidism. So, the patient's clinical presentation is suggestive of hyperparathyroidism, making the correct choice answer B, that is the primary hyperparathyroidism. So key findings include elevated serum calcium. The patient's serum calcium level is significantly above the normal range, which is a hallmark of hyperparathyroidism. Elevated PTS levels. Now the PTS level is also elevated in this patient. In primary hyperparathyroidism, the PTS glands produce excessive PTS, which leads to increased calcium release from the bones and decreased calcium excretion in the kidneys. Frequent kidney stones, the patient's history of frequent kidney stones is a common consequence of hyperparathyroidism. High levels of calcium in the urine can lead to formation of kidney stone. Now, although the PTS, uh, PTS job is to increase the calcium level in the blood, but ultimately the uh, portion or fraction of that calcium will be secreted in the urine, leading to the renal stones. Okay. It will be more than the normal excretion. So, have a instance, the patient's elevated blood pressure may be due to the increased calcium levels and the effects of PTS in the blood levels. So, let's talk about hyperparathyroidism. You know, in my class, in Aviraj's class, we don't only discuss the question, we get the full knowledge about the topic. So, let's talk about hyperparathyroidism. So, it is one, one when one or more glands produce inappropriately high amounts of PTH relative to the serum calcium level, then that leads to hyperparathyroidism. It is the most common cause of hypercalcemia in the outpatient setting. Now, the causes include adenoma, okay, hyperplasia, and carcinoma. The thing it, with adenoma is that majority, uh, it only involves one gland, but, the, but hyperplasia involves all four glands. So let's talk about the clinical features now. So stones, bones, groans, and psychiatric overtones. You know this mnemonic. You need to remember this mnemonic for the rest of your lives. So stones, nephrolithiasis and nephrocalcinosis, bones, bonex and pain, osteitis fibrosa cystica, which is the brown tumor which predisposes the patient to pathological fractures. Groans, muscle pain and weakness, pancreatitis, peptic ulcer disease, gout, and constipation. Psychiatric overtones like depression, fatigue, anorexia, sleep disturbances, anxiety, lethargy. Other symptoms include polydipsia, polyuria, hypertension, shortened QT interval, and weight loss. So some uh, some of the USMLE questions will uh, be uh, giving you all these features, stones, bones, cones, and psychiatric overtones. overtones. The diagnosis goes directly to hyperparathyroidism in that case. So let's talk about the diagnosis of hyperparathyroidism. So calcium levels, when calculating the calcium levels, we are aware of albumin levels. Uh, calculated the ionized fraction or get an ionized calcium level, right? This is in the clinical setting. Another thing is the PTS level, which should be elevated related to the cal serum calcium levels. Uh, we need to note that in presence of hypercalcemia, a normal PTS level is abnormal, okay? If there is hypercalcemia, but the PTS level is normal, then it is abnormal. That is normal, it is still too high. The PTS should be decreasing because high calcium levels should suppress the PTS secretion. Hypophosphatemia, calcium increase, phosphate needs to go. And this calcium will also be secreted in the urine, leading to the increased urinary calcium or hypercalciuria. Now, this is the X-ray of osteitis fibrosa cystica. Here you can see X-ray of the clavicle, uh, which leads to uh, the brown tumor for the osteitis fibrosa cystica. This is what the x ray looks like here. Okay. And also, the, the patient is, is prone to the pathological fracture in this clavicle. Now, let's review once the first step that we have about the hyperparathyroidism. So, primary hyperparathyroidism is usually due to the parathyroid adenoma or hyperplasia. Hypercalcemia or hypercalciuria, stones, uh, uh, polyuria, thrones, hypophosphatemia, increased PTH, increased ALP, increased unity CMP is the uh, basis of the diagnosis. It is most often asymptomatic, 
but may present with bone pain, weakness, or constipation. That is stones, bones, groans, psychiatric overtones again. And also osteitis fibrosa cystica, in which this, there are cystic bone spaces which are filled with brown fibrous tissue. Okay, and due to the increased PTH, classically associated with primary, but also seen with secondary hyperparathyroidism. Now, secondary hyperparathyroidism, secondary hyperplasia due to the decreased calcium absorption and increased phosphate, most often in the chronic kidney disease, which causes hypovitaminosis D. The kidney is not functioning, so the uh, vitamin D is not activated. And hyperphosphatemia, that is decreased calcium. Okay. Now, if, uh, if there is decreased uh, uh, calcium absorption of, uh, or if there is increased phosphate absorption in the uh, renal system, then if that increased uh, phosphate uh, will lead to the decreased calcium. And this decreased calcium will lead to the increased PTH secretion. And that is leading to the secondary hyperparathyroidism. Hypercalcemia, hyperphosphatemia in chronic kidney disease versus hypophosphatemia with most other cases, increased ALP and there is increased PTH. Remember, there in this case, the calcium is decreased, but the PTH is, is increasing. Whenever we talk about hyperparathyroidism, we are talking about the PTH hormone rather than the calcium hormone, okay? Rather than the calcium level. So PTH level is increased, then that is hyperparathyroidism, no matter the calcium level. Anything that is leading to the increase in the PTS level is called as hyperparathyroidism. Tertiary hyperparathyroidism, that is the refractory hyperparathyroidism resulting from the chronic kidney disease, where the PTS is highly elevated and there is also increase in the calcium. Now let's talk about another question. This is also again a straightforward question. What is the most likely diagnosis of a 45 year old woman with a history of neck surgery presents to the emergency department with muscle cramps and paresthesia? She had undergone thyroidectomy for Graves' disease five years ago. This is the most important clue. On physical examination, there is chauvistic sign and trosseus sign. Lab studies reveal a serum calcium level of 6.8, which is decreased. Serum phosphate level of 5.2, which is increased. And a low and a low PTS level. What is the most likely diagnosis? Pause the video and guess the answer. So the answer is C, that is hypoparathyroidism because of the low serum calcium, the chubistic and sign and the history of thyroidectomy. Now, the low serum calcium, the patient's serum calcium level is significantly below the normal range, which is a characteristic feature of hypoparathyroidism. Hypercalcemia can lead to muscle cramps and parasitia. Chubistic and sign, the presence of chubistic sign, that is the facial muscle, when we tap the facial nerve, there is a facial muscle twitching. And in the trosseus sign, there is a carpopedal spasm when we inflate the blood pressure cough which are characteristic of neuromuscular science of hypercalcemia. Now, the uh, history of thyroid, thyroidectomy tells us that while removing the thyroid, the PTS glands were also removed, and therefore, due to the decrease in the PTS or due to the complete stoppage in the PTS secretion, the patient is now having hypoparathyroidism. Now, let's talk about the causes. So, there is removal of glands during the head and neck surgery, account for the majority of cases. The most common cause is thyroidectomy, actually. And in case of non, uh, the non-surgical source of hyperparathyroidism is usually very, very rare. Now, let's talk about the clinical features. Number one is the cardiac arrhythmias, rickets, and osteomalacia, increased neuromuscular muscular irritability due to the hypercalcemia, numbness, circumoral fingers and toes, tetany, hyperactive deep tendon reflexes, chubistic sign, grand mal seizures, uh, basal ganglia calcifications, Prolonged QT interval, hypercalcium should always be in the differential diagnosis of a prolonged QT interval and cataracts. The diagnosis is made by the low serum calcium, high serum phosphate, serum PTS is inappropriately low and there is low urine CAMP. Now, this is all reverse of, okay, this is all reverse of hyperparathyroidism, right? Now, let's review the first state of the hyperparathyroidism. So, due to the injury to the parathyroid glands or the blood supply, usually during the thyroid surgery, which is the most common cause. Or maybe due to the immune, autoimmune destruction or disorder syndrome, where the PTS is not formed at the first place. Findings will be titani, hypercalcemia, and hyperphosphatemia. We already talked about the chauvistic and the trosseus sign. Now, there are two types of, of hyper, hyperparathyroidism subtypes. Number one is the pseudo hyperparathyroidism type 1a. And pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism. This I don't think is much higher, not actually asked most common in the exam, but still, if there is it is in the first aid, we need to review this. So, pseudo hypoparathyroidism type 1a is the autosomal dominant condition, which is maternally transmitted mutations in the imprinted gene as thing. If you want to remember something from this topic, that is the gene as thing. So, the gene is one inactivating mutation. 
that encodes the GS protein or alpha subunit leads to the inactivation of adenylate cyclase when PTS binds to its receptor. And there will be, will be an in-organ resistance of the PTS. Okay. Uh, in physical findings, there is Albright hereditary osteodystrophy, that is the shortened fourth and fifth digit. Here you can see fifth and fourth digits. Short stretcher, round face, subcutaneous calcifications also. There will be increased PTH, decreased calcium, and increased phosphate. Now there is the pseudo hypoparathyroidism. So there is autosomal dominant, paternally transmitted mutations, genus gene, but without end organ resistance to the PTS due to the normal maternal allele, maintaining the renal responsiveness to the PTS. Findings are same as all right. Labs are normal PTS, calcium, and phosphate. Now this one is very, very important. So that there should be uh, typical hemostasis, typical uh, level between the calcium and uh, PTH. So this one is a, let's say, normal level. Now let's say that the calcium is increasing, but the PTH is also increasing, okay? That is the number one thing. If there is PTH also increase and there is calcium also increase, then that is called as primary hyperparathyroidism, okay? The defect is in the gland. Now, if there is a secondary hyperparathyroidism, then there is increase in the PTH. Okay, there is increase in the PTH, but there will be decreased in the calcium level. If there is hypoparathyroidism, then there is decrease in the PTH plus decrease in the calcium. Or in case of chronic kidney disease, there is increase in the PTH. PTH is highly increased and also there is increase in the calcium that is there. So in case of uh, PTS independent hypercalcemia, okay, the PTS will be low. That is the hypercalcemia is not dependent upon the PTS, but, but there is increase in the calcium level. Now this increase in the calcium level is usually due to excess calcium intake. Now in this figure that you need to know is that what is increasing in, what is decreasing in the different conditions. Now these up down arrows, will be in your examinations, will surely be in your, be in your examination. And these up-down arrow sort of questions are generally from concepts like this. What is increasing? What is decreasing? If you just remember, if you just uh, try to analyze these all things, this increase, this decrease, then you will never forget this concept in your whole life. Now, before we leave, the last topic that is familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia. So it is also an autosomal dominant condition linked to the defective G-coupled calcium sensing receptors in the multiple tissues. Example, PTS and kidneys. Now there is higher than normal calcium levels required to suppress the PTS. Excessive renal calcium reabsorption will lead to mild hypercalcemia and hypocalciuria with normal to increased PTS level. Now, thank you for watching the video. We log in back in the next one with another concept. Thank you.